Well, it's great to be back with you. This is um, the first video that uh, I'm producing in my UK workshop, having relocated it and uh, more or less got um, things set up. Uh, the first uh, job was to produce, was to make this bench, and uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, find most of the materials lying around here. I uh, just had to buy a few lengths of 3 by 2 but the rest of it uh, was free effectively, so that was great. So I've got the bench set up, um, put the, uh, the uh, grinder on the wall, um, installed my, my two MIFID lathes in position, um, my small pillar drill, and a uh, shaping machine here. And, um, but um, I've got a few uh, new purchases which I'd like to uh, just share with you and then um, one particular project that I hope um, I can uh, pursue over the next few weeks. So uh, let's just change angle and uh, show you some of the things that I've been able to purchase recently. So the first item is this uh, granite surface plate. It's uh, 18 inches by 12 inches and um, I've been wanting a surface plate for a long time it will be a very handy addition to my workshop, certainly a huge improvement over my sheet of plate glass which I use for many years. Uh, there's a slight sheen here, that's actually just because I put some engineers uh, marking blue on it and uh, uh, that, that, uh, that's what you can see here. But it's, it's, uh, it's nice, it looks like it's been looked after, it came with a cover so I'm hopeful that it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be accurate. The second thing I picked up uh, is this Abwood um, machinist vise and um, uh, this looks in good condition um, somebody's replaced the jaws there um, but uh, yeah this is uh, um, a little bit uh, big perhaps for my shaper but uh, certainly a useful addition to the workshop which uh, I hope I will be able to use sometime in the future so for the other items we're going to swing around and I'll show you um, the other items that I picked up. So the next item I picked up is this uh, pillar drill. Um, in my UK workshop um, I had a, I had a smaller one which you probably saw on the bench earlier. Uh, but I really needed something heavier as I have in Pakistan. And uh, so I was looking for a heavier machine, um, maybe light industrial quality, um, and certainly something which I could easily drill larger holes. So I, I came across this uh, Meddings M4, I don't know the exact vintage, but it's an M4 and uh, what I like about it uh, is first of all the overall build quality, it's obviously a good quality machine, um, uh, just the general proportions of it, uh, the fact that it has a geared head so you can comfortably um, drill larger holes at an appropriate speed if you're, if you're uh, drilling holes in steel. Um, it's got a number two Morse taper. Um, it came with a, a nice Jacobs chuck on it, so that was a that was a bonus. But there were a few um, issues with it, which uh, is the reason I got it. I got it cheap. Um, one was um, it came with no handles. Um, this is just temporary one, but there were no handles on it. So, um, but that's a relatively minor issue. I can I can sort that out. We can make some new handles. Um, the next obvious issue was the drive pulley from the motor and uh, somebody bodged it and um, the key had come loose and so spoiled the shaft there, we'll have to tidy that up but also a crack has emanated from um, from, the, uh, from the key slot so we need to sort that out um, the gear doesn't properly engage in, in the high range. Um, I don't know if there's a selector fork or something which is slightly out or it could just be a matter of adjustment. The gears all feel fine um, but there's something about the selection there which needs to be tidied up. I checked the quill, the quill's straight. Um, there's a little bit of play in the, in the lower bearing. I, I, hope, I hope that can be adjusted uh, but the quill is nice and tight uh, in its housing, everything locks, feels good. Um, yeah, it just it just feels nice. And there's inevitable damage on the on the table. Uh, however, not as bad as many other machines I saw when I was looking. So generally, I think it's just a question of tidying it up. Um, it's got the cover. I've got the cover down here for the top. Um, actually, it raises a bit higher than this. It goes up another six inches. 
So yeah, this is great for, for my workshop. So what I plan to do is to um, go through in a series, um, looking at how to how I'm going to um, get this uh, up and running the way I want it to be. And I think the first item I'm going to focus on is this pulley on the on the motor. So we're going to zoom in on that and have a look at see what we can do about it. Well, the last uh, item I picked up uh, on that day of shopping was this uh, Clark Metalworker bandsaw, six inch. This is in a different league, I'm afraid, to the Meddings drill. This is much uh, cheaper and lighter machine, but um, it came at a reasonable price. Uh, the the uh, motor had been changed for a uh, continuous duty motor, which uh, was a bonus, I guess. Um, uh, and I've always cut my material by hand, so it will be interesting to have a bandsaw to use. Um, I didn't set out to buy it, but um, yeah, I think this is probably a, a nice little addition to the workshop. Uh, as I say, it's not the same quality as uh, the other equipment I have, but um, I, I've looked around and seen what others have done with this kind of machine, uh, which comes, I think, in different colours and maybe different labels on it, but basically produced in the same factory, I think. So uh, yeah, I'll have a little bit, of, spend a little bit of time setting this up, and uh, hope to be able to use this in the workshop. It would certainly be nice to set a piece of uh, stock. Uh, to be cut and, and be able to do something else at the same time. Well, last night I had uh, I thought a little bit more about this gearbox issue and the fact that uh, it doesn't seem to be engaging properly in the high range. So I had a look online and I discovered this is a common issue with uh, this kind of uh, Meddings drill. Um, and um, in particular, um, I had a look at uh, migwelding.co.uk forum and uh, Brad93 had several posts on there based on his, experiencing, his experience of renovating a, s a machine similar to this. Now it turns out that there are two tough null gears in the back here, here and uh, often those teeth get stripped. Um, so I think uh, before going ahead and um, uh, making the pulley, the drive pulley, I think it'd be wise to open this up, have a look and see the full scope of the work that uh, might be before me. So um, that's going to be the next step. Well, we've been able to uh, get the top off the gearbox and uh, as we suspected, uh, one of the Tufnell gears has um, practically been worn away. So you can see here that uh, it should be across the full width there, but um, two thirds of that's been worn away. You have the uh, steel gears on the other side, they're fine, of course, um, and it's the high speed engagement that uh, seems to have been failing. I do wonder if part of the problem, the original problem, was the selector fork because I notice that the selector fork is not securely attached to its shaft and there's a bit of freedom there so it could be that for some time it wasn't properly engaging and that precipitated this problem, I don't know. Anyway, the next thing to do is to see if we can um, locate a new gear um, and assuming I can do that then I have confidence now to go ahead and work on the pulleys. Um, if I have to end up replacing um, bearings then um, that's something I'll look at later. At least I know basically um, this part of the machine is okay. Well I've removed the um, top part of the bearing housing and uh, the gears, uh, brought them over to the bench and um, it all came, came apart very easily, no problems at all. Um, closer look at the two um, Tufnell uh, gears and um, you can see here that actually this one is worn on both sides. So uh, that's curious, uh, uh, that indicates to me that somebody already has 
open this up and turn the gear around to have a second go. And um, so now both sides have been worn away and there's not much left. So that definitely needs to be replaced. Um, the good news is that the um, these are fine um, and there's a ball and detent in there. Um, that works fine. So that's, that's all right, that can go back as it is. The bearings look fine. I'm going to split this so I can take a closer look at um, this smaller gear. It's 56 teeth, uh, but I want to check the pressure angle. So I want to get that off and have a closer look. Well, this is very fiddly, but uh, what we're trying to do is measure, or rather estimate, the angle um, at which the two gears um, mesh. So, actually, the two points on the teeth uh, where they touch, and uh, I've tried to place the ruler at an angle tangential to that. Um, and the way that I'm, I've actually done it here is to set up the gears so they are, one's packed up to bring it to the right height to the, the other one. I'm looking through, looking vertically down and there's a little bit of residual oil which is clinging to the two teeth and uh, that's indicating to me that's the point at which they're just about to contact and then I'm laying my ruler across the top of the two and at a tangent to that and that should be the pressure angle um, uh, what I'll try and do is photograph this blow it up and see if I can tell what that angle is <laughs> whether that works or not we'll see so uh, here we're looking down on the two gears with the tough knoll gear up on top and the steel gear below. Um, we can see um, the two teeth which are about to mesh. In fact, there's a little gap there, uh, but uh, still we can, we can see and we can locate the precise point at which they mesh. Now we need to um, draw the tangent to that point of contact. And uh, that's indicated by the steel rule as well. Then we need to draw a line perpendicular to that. And that's the pressure line. So that's the line of force between the two teeth. Now we need to also uh, identify the tangent to the pitch circle diameter. And that's, uh, that's that line. And now we're getting close to be able to determine the pressure angle. So a little bit of trigonometry. And uh, by direct measurement off the screen of my computer, amazingly, I came up with 20.1 degrees. I don't know whether that's a fluke, but uh, that was the result I came out with. Now, why is that significant? Well, that's significant because there are two common pressure angles, 14 and a half degrees and 20 degrees. Uh, so 20.1 is uh, amazingly close to 20. So I conclude that the pressure angle of these gears is 20 degrees. I'm going to use that information for purchasing our gear blank. Well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this, um, this first uh, real experience in my UK workshop. It's certainly great having a workshop here. Um, I was getting quite tired of producing um, videos, workshop videos, without actually having access to a workshop. So this is very refreshing being able to get my hands dirty once again. So um, uh, I've had a look around and um, following that measurement of the gear, 20-20 uh, degree pressure angle, uh, 56 tooth, uh, 16 DP gear is available here in the UK in Teflon. Uh, from a gear manufacturer so I'm going to be ordering one of those and as it happens 
is exactly the right width, uh, half an inch. So uh, all I'll need to do is bore it and uh, fit it to fit it to the assembly here, and uh, that will be that part of the project out of the way.